What is up, everybody? Michael Crump back here again, talking about the latest and the greatest in PlayStation homebrew news and much, much more. So as you all know by now, the biggest jailbreak news for PlayStation has finally hit, and that is obviously that you can jailbreak a PlayStation 4 on firmware 11.0 or lower. So just the other day, the Flow released this tool right here, which I'm sure you've all probably already seen by now. And what I decided to do was to kind of wait and see for the first day of what the other methods were, or what was the best method to run this, and kind of compile that into this video here today. So if you want to be able to run this on Windows, then I am going to show you how to do that step by step by step. So there is a few things that you are going to need to get started. One of them is, is that I created this mega.nz link, which contains the compiled files. So this is going to prevent you from having to need Linux whatsoever. So all of these will be in the description. So you just go to the URL and then just press download. The next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to download and install Git. So obviously I'm on Windows, so you press download for Windows and then go ahead and download it and then install it as well. Now, the other thing that you are going to need is going to be Python. So Python 3.12.3 is the very latest. So you'll want to download Python and install it on your machine. Okay, and to get started, go to this URL and we're going to take this very first sample here and we're going to press copy. And then back in your command prompt, just navigate to a folder where you're going to want to keep this at. I just chose my PlayStation 4 and then just a playground folder because this is just kind of playing around until we get something that is um, more meaningful, meaning that things like Gold Hen would be launching as well. Okay, so at this point, again, if you had Git installed, you should see a screen just like this. Next, we're going to install the requirements. So we're just going to go ahead and press copy there. Okay, so back over in our command prompt, we're going to go ahead and navigate into that directory. And so it's just going to be CD and then PPPWN. And now we're going to go ahead and paste in the requirements. And one thing that we won't need is obviously going to be sudo. So I'm just going to remove that command and then leave everything else just like it is and then press return. Okay, in my instance, it says the requirement is already satisfied. In yours, it may start downloading stuff. Now, the next commands was compiling the payloads. And if you went ahead and you already downloaded the file that I provided here, then what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to just copy those into that directory. Let's, let me show you how. Okay, so once you extract my files, you're going to simply have these two folders. And then if you go to wherever you have been following these instructions for, for Windows and the command prompt, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to grab both of my files and then just drag and drop them into that folder. And it's going to ask you, do you want to replace them? And we are going to go to replace the files in the destination. Now, all that basically just did right there is, is that we already have the compiled stage one dot bin file, which previously we needed Linux for. And obviously right there is the other one for the stage two dot bin, which for now just pops up the alert. Now, again, this stage two dot bin will be replaced with gold hen soon. Back at the instructions here, we can see that now we have compiled the payloads, which we just copied them over. And that now in order to run the exploit, we need to see what is the interface of our machine. Now, right here, this was obviously saying that you needed to run sudo again, which we can't run that. But if you're on Windows and you simply have one Ethernet port, then that is very easy because it is just Ethernet with the capital E. And I'll show you that in just one second. So let's go ahead and let's run the exploit now. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this, all of this information right here. And then I'm going to copy it and I'm just going to paste that in here. I'm first off going to scroll all the way back here, Ethernet. 
and I want to try this on my 9.00 machine, so I'm going to enter 9.00. Now, the only thing that you'll need to do is to plug in an Ethernet cable in the back of your PlayStation 4 to your PC. Over on your PlayStation 4, you're going to want to go over to Settings. And then once you go to Settings, you're going to want to go to Network. And then set up an internet connection. You're going to choose a LAN cable. You're going to want custom. Next, you're going to use PPPoE. And then for the user ID and for the password, I just used uh, the letter G for some reason. And then press next. And then you're going to select automatic for the DNS settings and then automatic for the MTU settings. And then or proxy server, do not use, and then you can go ahead and press the test internet connection. Now, one thing to tell you is, is that if you already have your set just like this, there is no need to keep going back through the setup, the internet connection wizard here. You can just simply skip right back over to the test internet connection, and it will absolutely trigger the same thing. Okay, and now the last thing to do is just go ahead and run it. And you can see there's already a status that's happening. Okay. Now, as far as keeping this updated, it's super simple if you followed this guide and installed Git. So one thing that you will see is, is that he is actively working on it, which means it's only going to get better. And since you followed this guide and you have git installed and now you just need to type git pull. And so if you do that and you see already up to date, then that means you are already on his very latest version. Now, if you're not, then it will look something just like this right here. So here we can see that when I ran the git pull, it found that there was a couple of files in here that needed to be changed. There was 66 insertions and then 34 deletions, which is pretty neat because you can keep all track with all of this by just simply typing in that git pull command. And then I did want to wrap up with a couple of these questions here. Is it worth trying this now? I would say only if you want to see that pop-up message. And that is the truth. Uh, right now, there is no real reason for you trying it outside of maybe just wanting to test maybe your network configuration. Do you have everything working properly? Do you have a network cable that seems to work with this method? So yeah, totally up to you. Um, what firmware is that going to be on? Again, PlayStation 4 11.0 and under. What if I'm on PS4 9.03? Should I update to 11? The answer is always going to be no with these sort of questions. Never, ever, ever update. Staying at the lowest firmware possible is always the best idea. If we find that 11.0 is a lot more stable, well, then eventually we'll recommend people to use that or to upgrade to that. But right now, stay as low as possible. Now, obviously, the next one is, can I run homebrew fake package games? No. You can't do anything with it outside of that alert. And then what happens to the USB key that we are using today? Well, it should go away. Now, I think we still have to see, you know, what things are looking like in the future with like, you know, how stable is this jailbreak and so forth. So anyway, I hope that video at least gets you up and running for now. There's tons of developments going on with this, and I'll try to keep you updated as much as possible. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Michael, out.